There we go. So how to make it get my camera flipped around. <laughs> um, I've been playing around with the scheduling feature so I can schedule it, um, go ahead and add some links on things that I'm going to be using, uh, things that I already know that I'm going to be using, so that you guys can um, grab those links right away if you are looking for them. So um, I, I like that feature. I've been trying to use it a little bit more. So hopefully gives you guys the links right away instead of waiting till after the video um, to add them in. Anyway. Um, it's been a long time since I've been on here. Uh, it's been, I don't know, since before the holidays. It was totally crazy. Um, not totally crazy. We had a really good Christmas, really good New Year. Um, but it just gets busy. Everything gets busy. So I haven't been able to be live or anything and we're kind of getting back into it. Um, and I'm kind of getting back into it for a few weeks and then it'll be creativation. So that's really exciting too, but it's still, it's still going to be a little bit crazy. Anyway, I'm going to try to hop on here and be live with everybody as much as I can. Anyway, so I'm doing a little bit of creating today and I have these cute little fairies here. These are fairies that I created with Brutus Monroe's glitter drops. And if you notice, they, um, they're really cute. <laughs> uh, I'll show you how I did these, but this is some of the Brutus Monroe glitter drops and they dry and they hold their shape, um, but they're a little bit flexible. So they're really kind of fun. So I thought this was a really fun thing to do with the fairy stencil. Where did I put my fairy stencil? I think it's still by my, um, my sink after I washed it off. So I'll go grab that in a second. But anyway, I want to add some of these little fairies to a few cards here and just make a few scenes. So we'll do that today. I was thinking about doing a little bit of ink blending in the background to kind of make it like a twilight kind of sky or something. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Let me go grab my stencil real quick so that I can kind of show you how I did these little fairies. Um, super simple. I'll be right back. All right, I always forget to grab something before I go live. Anyway, here is the stencil. I think it's really super cute. I hope you can see it. It's got all these little fairies on here. It's got some little stars and little mushrooms and circles too. It would make a really great background. I wanted to do something a little bit different with it though. So I'll show you how I went and I made these fairies. I'm gonna move this to the side. I don't wanna lose any pieces because those are the pieces I wanna use for my project, my, my card. Hey Tracy, nice to see you here. Okay, so I'm just taping this down to my craft mat. I'm not using a piece of paper or anything because I want to let this glitter drop dry. And then once it's dry, you can peel up those fairies and use them on different projects. Um, now that I think about it, I think I want to do this off to the side so that I can still use my little, um, my craft area. Let me do, I'm trying to look on my screen and see if you guys can still see. Okay, I think that's good. I want to get it off to the side so I can still craft, but still for you guys to see. So I'm going to do this little fairy here up in the top corner. Now this is super simple. These glitter drops are really fun to work with. Um, you just want to, this is how I do it. I, I mean, you could probably squeeze them out above the stencil and then just uh, scrape it on. I go ahead and I put some right on. The back of my palette knife. Now see how puffy that is? It's really fun and it looks a little cloudy right now but when it dries it's going to be so much more sparkly so I hope, hope you can see that. It does dry with dimensions so if you wanted to make like glitter drops or little embellishments you could go squirt a little bit out make some little drops on your craft mat and let them dry and then you can just um, peel them up later and use them to embellish your card. So there's a ton of fun things you can do with these glitter drops. Um, this is the silver. Yep, it's just silver. I wanted to see if it was sterling. It's not sterling, um, it's just silver, but really cute. They also have, I think gold, scarlet, and maybe a green, maybe like an emerald. Not 100% sure. Anyway, so I am just scraping this over this little fairy here. I'm trying to be careful not to get any underneath 
that stencil. I want to make, oh, I think I'm missing some on her wing. There we go. Um, having, having the silver kind of makes it a little bit difficult to see if you got all the spots filled in just because it's kind of the same color as your craft mat. And then I just peel up my stencil and I'm just going to let that sit there. I'm going to let it sit there and dry because once it's dry, you can just easily peel it up off of your craft mat. And if you don't have like a nonstick craft mat, like I'm using here, um, you can use wax paper probably or parchment paper, something that's going to, um, you know, that it's not really going to stick on too, too much. Um, but this craft mat works really good. And then just make sure you close your top so it doesn't dry out and you're good to go. So that is how I created these cute little fairies here that I'm going to be using for this project. And these are actually little die cuts that I've used before. I didn't need them <laughs> for my other cards that I used them on. And I thought it would be really cute to make a little scene using some of these flowers and wood background. So let's go ahead and do that. I kind of really like this one here with this little fairy sitting on the flower. So what I want to do with this is I'm just going to remove these little pieces, set them to the side. Now these do kind of stick a little bit. I'm, I would I would almost describe them as like a vinyl sticker or something that kind of have that feeling to them. You do want to be careful not to like tear them or anything, but they've they seem to be a pretty durable. So I'm just gonna set these over here to the side and I want to mask off my card because I want a little white border and then I'm gonna ink blend the inside and try to make sort of a twilight, evening, sunset kind of background. Hey Ivy, glad to see you here. We're just making some cards using the glitter drops. So I don't know if you can kind of see up here. I don't know if you caught that. I um, put a little glitter drop fairy <laughs> using the stencil over there and I'm just going to let it dry. Um, these other fairies, I was just going about to say that, Linda, how, how long does it take to dry? Um, these other fairies, I actually did them right before I went to bed and then I left them overnight. Um, and they were definitely dry by the morning. So I can't say for sure exactly how long. I think um, you will kind of tell when they're dry because you can really tell this one's so much darker than that one. Um, so when they dry, they're going to be a lot darker and you can kind of tell and they're really going to be stuck down. So what I do is I just kind of pry them up and they're, they're really flexible so it doesn't hurt them too much. But I'd say just be careful and try not to rip them. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make sure that this is sort of straight so maybe that's a little too much let's see here whoops am i still with you guys my ipad just went out on me okay there we go um that was weird usually when <laughs> when my ipad goes out it's um it's because it kicked me off the live stream and this time it didn't my ipad just stopped working Anyway, so I am masking off a square for my card. Now this is gonna hold it down to my craft mat and it's also going to um, mask off a little edge around my card so that I can easily ink blend on the background. Now when I like to use this painter's tape, it works really great for masking for different masking projects like I'm doing today, but um, I wanna make sure it doesn't tear my paper when I peel it up because I don't wanna go through all that Pro not problem, but all that work of ink blending on my background and then having it tear my paper when I peel it up. So I'm just eyeballing that, making sure it's even. So well, what I like to do anyway, what I was saying, what I like to do with my painter tape is I just like to run it on my pants or my sleeve, pull it up a few times, kind of get that stickiness um, that tackiness to go away a little bit before I put it on my paper and that way it will, um, it won't, hopefully won't tear my paper. Now you still want to be really careful when you're peeling it up and it helps a lot if you kind of just peel it back on itself. So I'll show you guys that when I peel it up. 
Just trying to get these edges to be somewhat even. So I'm going to take a look. I think it's pretty good. It seems like the top might be a little bit thicker than the bottom, but we'll go with it. We'll see how it, how it works. There we go. So, almost done. It, um, I've learned it definitely takes a little bit of prep work to get a really nice, clean um, card the way I want it. Um, it's a little bit tedious, <laughs> but it's worth it because it helps me get better results. So, take the time to prep your card accordingly and you will not regret it. Okay, so that is all masked off. And I want to select my inks. Now I was thinking maybe, um, maybe sort of like a twilight kind of sky. So that's a plum. That's going to be a darker color. And maybe I want to get some pink in there too. So that's a really light pink. So that might go down on the bottom. And what other colors can we throw in there? Let's see. Do, do, do. Here's a Marsala. That's kind of a nice purple. Um, let's kind of start with that and see see what that looks like. And we can always add in other colors too if we want to. So I'm going to start with a really light color down here and then go out to dark. It kind of looks like the, um, the sun is setting or it's getting to be sort of twilight. So I'm gonna use um, my lightest color. This is Honeysuckle, which is one of my favorite pinks from Brutus Monroe. It's really light. So you're not gonna see it right away, but you kinda just have to keep working with the ink to blend it out. I'm doing on the bottom here, I'm gonna try to do sort of a half circle and then kinda blend it out up and make it darker as it goes up. Thanks, Lauren. Glad to see you popping in. I like these glitter drop fairies too. Um, I've been playing around with them trying to figure out what I want to do with them. They're so cute, but I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with them. Let me sh see if I could find. I, I was going to go Valentine's Day. Um, and I, I still think this is really cute, but I just couldn't find a background to kind of put it on. So I thought I'd go in a different direction. So I still have this sitting off to the side here. <laughs> I might actually finish a card with it, but I don't know. But I thought it was just cute to make them hold like a little I love you kind of thing. Um, Cause their arms are kind of stretched out like they should be holding something. So I thought that would be really cute, but we'll see. We'll see if I can figure something else out for them. All right. So I've got some of that honeysuckle down. Um, hopefully you guys can see it. It's a really kind of light. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit more. I don't know if I want Marsala. Maybe I should go do like a blue. Well, let's do a little Marsala and see what that looks like. Now I want to tap off some of that ink on the side because I don't want it to be too dark when I bring it to the paper. I want it to start out really light and then I want to add more color in as I'm blending because it's always easier to add more color than to kind of take color away. There goes my iPad again. What's going on? Am I still with you guys? Now I have to watch it add before I can see myself again. So weird. Oh well. Okay, so I kind of like this Marsala. I think that's looking pretty good. I don't want to get it too dark though. I'm going to have to come back in here with some of that honeysuckle, I think and um, blend that out a little bit more. Okay, and then I wanna take some plum and put that up on the top. Get some of that darker purple. Really make it look like a night sky. And I might actually come in with some midnight and make the edges a little bit darker yet still. So I'm learning um, that contrast from dark to light really helps make your cards pop. It makes your coloring pop. 
uh, um, more contrast can be a good thing. I'm always kind of scared to go too dark, but I've been kind of learning to add a little bit more contrast. So I want to blend this plum into the Marsala, make it look like there are just kind of, you know, a gradient of color coming across the page. So I hope everyone had a good uh, Christmas and New Year. Ours was really kind of quiet. It was just us up at home, but it was really nice. It's kind of nice to get back into um, into the normal routine, though. <laughs> I have to say. Okay. I think I'm going to come back in with a little bit more Marsala. Try to blend that out. This is a really purpley sky. And then I want to blend this, this corner out with a little bit more of that honeysuckle. It's such a light color that I'm not afraid of, of putting too much on there. Oh, I'm sorry, Ivy. Ugh, being sick is the worst anyway, but over the holidays, it's like, it makes it so much worse. New Year's was better, that's good. That is good. Just trying to make sure it looks like there's no um, harsh lines between the colors. I really want it to look like it's just kind of fading out. And I think that looks really nice. I might go ahead and where's my midnight? Midnight is one of my favorite colors. It's such a dark color. Um, it's kind of a dark, dark blue, I think. Purplish blue. Let me make sure I put that the right one um and you can tell like this ink ink blending thing um is pretty saturated with this color already i'm gonna put some of this up in this corner really just kind of darken these edges it's gonna look like it's really turning into nighttime which is what i'm going for i'm kind of barely just putting it on the edge of the page here because I want just the edges to be dark and I can't wait to peel this up and see what it looks like there we go I think ink blending um, a night sky or a sunset or something is one still one of my favorite techniques <laughs> all right I think that's looking good um, I'm trying to think of if there's anything else I want to do before I peel up that painter's tape. And I think I might go ahead and add some little flicks of pearl aqua pigment so that I can get some shimmer on there, um, before I peel it up. So let me grab my pearl and shake it up. Now, um, Brutus Monroe surface inks which I was using here to blend, um, they do not react with water. So you can go ahead and add different media on top of them and they're not gonna run or um, react to it at all. They're gonna stay put, which um, water reactive inks are really cool if that's the um, look you're going for. But if you really want your background to stay vibrant, um, these permanent inks are great, a great option. Okay. So I'm just taking my um, Brutus Monroe water brush and my pearl aqua pigment. I'm just gonna squirt a little bit of this pigment right onto my craft mat. I absolutely love my craft mat because there's so many things that you can do with it. Okay, I'm gonna get a little water on um, my brush. 
not too much because I want this pearl to really stand out. And then I'm just gonna start flicking it on. Now you don't see it a whole lot, but it's gonna add just a few specks and it's not gonna stand out um, too much, but when you hold this card and you kind of turn it in the light, you're gonna notice that it's gonna start to sparkle. So I'm gonna make sure I just get these spots all over on the background. It's just gonna be a really subtle sparkle. I feel like I've said it before, but I love these water brushes for the splatters they make. <laughs> Sounds really weird, but they, they splatter really well. Now I'm not gonna be afraid to put a lot of splatters on here. Um, since it doesn't really add color, it's just gonna add shine. I want to make a lot because I mean we're working with fairies today we need it to be shimmery okay I think that's looking pretty good all right let me wipe up my craft mat and I'm gonna hit this with my heat tool and then I'll peel up the painters tape and we'll see what we got I want to make sure that my heat tool is nice and hot before I bring it to my paper and hopefully that way it'll cut down on some warping it's gonna melt or not melt um, dry that pigment a lot faster and this media mat is heat resistant but my cutting mat that I have underneath it is not heat resistant so I really shouldn't be bringing my um, heat tool to it so I want to make sure that I don't have my heat tool on it longer than I have to. Hey Monique, so glad you popped in. We are playing with fairies today. We are doing a little fairy scenery, maybe. I can't wait to see what this background looks like when I peel off this tape. Okay, I don't want it to warp too much because this is actually my card front. Like, I'm not layering this on top of a card. This is my card right here. So I don't want it to warp too much. So I'm going to peel off my painter's tape. And like I showed you guys before, I um, I put this tape on my, my sleeve and peeled it off a few times to make it a little less sticky. But when you're peeling it off your card, you want to really peel it back on itself and pull slowly so that you don't rip up your card base. But you can see it's coming off really well. I actually think that the heat gun helps soften up that adhesive too, so that it's really, um, it's kind of soft. It's coming off really nice, but you wanna be careful to not rip that card stock, especially if you're doing like what I'm doing and you're putting it right onto your card base. I think I'm really liking this background. Here we go. Ta-da! And there we have a cute little twilight sort of background. I really love that background. And it is a little bit warped. Hopefully I can um, put it under a stack of books or something when I'm done. Help it to kind of flatten out again. Okay, so now I want to find my die cuts that we're going to use right here. I wanted to kind of layer them on, kind of coming off from the bottom. We'll see what, we're, what we'll do, trim them down. Let's see. Neighbors are having a party or something. <laughs> they have their car parked out front with music going. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Anyway, so I'm gonna have some of these flowers kind of come in from the front and I'm debating if I wanna leave them white or if I want to color them because I think it would look really cool if they were colored this um, midnight 
because then they'd look like a silhouette, but I also really like the white, so I don't know. Then I'm going to um, kind of plop one of my fairies on here. Looks like she's just sitting there. Kind of want to angle this, I think, a little bit. And then I had a star, too, that she was kind of reaching for. Whoops. And then just kind of layer on some of these florals. And then um, bring this other fairy girl right here. And I think that looks really cute. I love it. Um, I need to figure out what kind of a sentiment. I didn't even look for a sentiment. Um, I have this. This, um, this is the Lucky You stamp set. I could put like, wishing you the best of luck. Because I don't want a huge sentiment. I just want something, something small, I think. You could do, wishing you the best of luck. You got this, my friend. Well, I think one of those would look really nice. Should I put it on a little strip of cardstock or should I just stamp it right on there? I don't know. I'm still figuring out if I want to make these um, card, these uh, die cuts, if I want to color them. Why don't we, you know what, since I'm going to chop them off at the bottom anyway, let's color the bottom piece and see what that looks like against the background. I don't want it to like blend in too much because I still Okay, I'm back. Let me turn my camera around. It kicked me off like it always does. <laughs> anyway, I was saying hi to Dee. Uh, thanks, Lauren. I'm glad you like it. And then I was asking you guys, what do you think? Do you think I should color these die cuts and make them sort of a silhouette? Or should I leave them white? Because I really love my white space, but the silhouette might kind of look nice. I'm kind of... I'm kind of leaning towards just leaving them white though. Hey Debbie, so glad you're here. Um, I kind of like them white, but you guys tell me, I think I'm gonna leave them white, but you tell me if you think I should um, color them because I totally could. Anyway, so I might go ahead and just kind of glue them down like that and then we can stamp on our sentiment. All right. Yeah, I love the white too. I think I'm leaning towards the white. I think it kind of pops with that white border um, that we left around there. It kind of um, just helps it stand out. So good, I'm glad you guys agree because I'm, I'm gonna stick with the white. So I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing these down. I wanna kind of keep it in the same place. <laughs> and, okay, so I'm gonna take my Brutus Monroe glue and I love, 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 love that I found a fine, fine tip applicator that fits on this small bottle. Um, this is a, a half an ounce. And um, I think the fine tip applicators, I think they tell you which ounce bottle it fits on. So maybe just kind of um, take note of that. But I love that it fits on here because I can add it to the back of these tiny die cuts. And... Um, makes it so easy just to adhere them down. So I'm kind of forgetting how far down I need the glue. So we're just gonna kind of add it, make sure we have it covered. And I think this was kind of, there we go. Peeking off the edge right there. We'll make sure it sticks down then our little fairy is gonna sit right on top. She's got that star stuck to her. Okay. Okay, that looks cute. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, adhere these other ones down. So we just came through the holidays. It's starting to kind of settle down a little bit. And then in, I think, two weeks, I'll be going to Creativation. Yay! I'm so excited. So I want to, I'm really going to try to do um, a lot of live videos while I'm there. It gets a little crazy when you're going around to all the different booths. And sometimes you kind of forget um, to pull out your phone and do a live because you're talking to people. Um, 
you're just trying to trying to get through. Um, but <laughs> um, I really want to try to do a lot of lives. So you guys tell me if there's anything you want to see, if there's anyone you want me to like track down. I'm really going to try to do um, an interview with Christopher. He's going to be in the Thermo Web booth. Um, so I'm going to head on over there and say hi to him, maybe get a live video, but let me know if there's anyone else you want to see. I'm really excited for this year. Hey Lauren. Okay. Go photograph that card. We've got to photograph while we still have sunlight. So thanks for popping in. Do you, you want to see anything new? That should be, um, that should be pretty. I think I could do that. A lot of the companies like to show off their new stuff at Creativation. So Tim Holtz, yes, he is a big personality there. I'll try to get some Tim Holtz stuff. I have to let you know though, the last two years I went and I went to try to go see Tim Holtz. He's just got like a cloud of people around him all the time. It's, it's so hard to get, the, get to the front of his um, live demos or anything because um, he is such an uh, amazing personality. Everybody loves to see what he's doing. Okay, so I just trimmed off the, the bottoms there. And I'm just going to go throw those away. But yeah, he's usually got something cool going on at Creativation. Something, I wonder if he'll have anything new this year. I know, I think last year, was it last year already? The Distress Ink Oxides were like the big thing. I think that was last year. So I'm going to go ahead and start gluing down these fairies. So I'm just going to use a little bit of my craft glue, just like on my die cuts. And um, I can tell that fairy that we did earlier, it's still drying. The edges are kind of getting darker, so um, she's starting to dry. And I don't know how long we've been going now on the live video. Um, because I know some of you asked how long it takes for these very fairies to dry. Um, I don't know because I just leave them overnight, but, um, this one over here is kind of starting to dry. If you guys can see it. Hey, Daniel. Yeah, it is really fun, Ivy. It's so amazing to go. Like, <laughs> I've been at Creativation the last two years. Um, mostly I was working in the booth with the company I went with. Um, this year they're not going, um, the company that I worked with. Um, so I'm going on my own. I was really blessed this year to be able to um, apply to become a member of AFCI, and I was accepted. So I'm really excited that for that. So I am um I am able to go on my own. So I'm taking some classes this year. Um I'm meeting with a few people. I'm gonna try to get around and do some more live videos and just kind of soak up the experience, you know, as someone who's going on their own and not with a company, which I love going with the company um because it's just so exciting to work in the booth and um get to meet people and everything. But this year it's gonna be different because um, it's just going on my own kind of, but I know Jess is going to be there. I'm going to meet up with her and Lauren's going to be there. I'm going to try to say hi to Christopher. And I have a few other friends that, um, I've seen in the past years that I'm excited to say hi to. So it's going to be a good time. I'm really excited. Thanks, Daniel. These are really cool. Yeah, I did kind of show how I made them already, but I'll give you a quick recap. So I used my fairy stencil and obviously this would be great for a cute background, but I loved all the individual little fairies. So um, I just put it down on my craft mat, taped it down, and then you take some glitter drops and just smear it over the fairies and then let them sit and dry. And since um, you can peel them off, I just did it right on my craft mat. So you can see this little fairy here. I did it at the beginning. She's still wet, but I think her feet are looking a little bit dry. Her feet are kind of dry, so that didn't take long at all. But yeah, after, oh, maybe not totally dry. I just broke off her toe. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so yeah, I left mine overnight. So maybe it, it would be a better idea to leave yours overnight. Um, but if you don't have a media mat, 
like I mentioned earlier, you can always use probably wax paper, I'm thinking. Um, anything that's going to peel off of really, really easily. Yeah, isn't it so cool? Um, Barina, she's on our inspiration team too. She did this and she kind of freehanded some hearts and she peeled them off too. And the really cool thing about these glitter drops is they also dry with some dimension. So you can kind of squirt some out onto your mat and make like little drops or something. It always reminds me of chocolate chips when I do that because <laughs> it has that little peak on top. But you could let that dry too and then make your own little embellishments. So it's gonna dry with dimension, so really cool. Teflon, yep, parchment paper. Oh, you know what would probably work too is if you like to do baking and you have those silicone sheets that I use for like cookies and stuff, I'm sure that would work too. So lots of fun things. All right, um, thank you, Daniel. I'm really liking that ink blended background. So I think I'm going to stamp a sentiment on there and I think this one's going to be done. So um, I don't know if you guys want to stick around to see me do another one or um, or what. But I was thinking of using this stamp set. This is the Lucky You and I could do You Got This or Wishing You the Best of Luck. I might do You Got This, my friend. Yeah. You got this. I like it. And I was thinking about just stamping it like right up here. Just about there. I think that might look nice. Yeah, you could probably use the freezer paper too on the shiny side. You want to see another one, Ivy? Because I can do that. I have another one, um, sort of a similar type card but I have it ready to go so and it looks like my son just fell asleep <laughs> he was uh put him down for a nap sometimes he sleeps and sometimes he doesn't um but he's really good about I do allow him to take books to bed I don't mind if he sits there and reads books um and to have some quiet time so but he uh just fell asleep so maybe I have some time to do another one with you guys all right, so I'm going to go ahead and just stamp this. I think, thanks, Daniel. Yep, I got the white Misty stickers. I was really tempted to do the turquoise ones, but I really like the white. So I think that's really cool that they make those stickers. I got a little um, OCD with putting them on, though, because I, did, I redid it like a million times because they were, like, slightly off. So I just had to, like, keep adding them until it was, like, perfect. So... Yeah, that's just the me thing, I guess. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp this right on my background with some of this black Versafine ink. Now this is a pigment ink, so you do want to let it dry. Don't smudge it. It will smear. It takes a little bit longer to dry. But if you don't want to wait for it to dry, you can always sprinkle a little bit of clear embossing powder over it. Since it stays wet for a while, you can emboss on it. And then we have a cute shimmery fairy card. Oh, love it. Okay, so that is card number one. So we can go ahead and make another card in the similar... Um, how do I have a whole desk and I have nowhere to put my Misty? Like, I don't have enough room. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make another card. And I had my pieces here somewhere. Here we go. We'll use that one. Actually, no, that one's already got something on it. So I'll just cut another card base, I think. Let me cut another card base. I have to find some light paper. Here we go. I'm kind of running out of white paper. All right, so here we go. Thanks guys, I'm glad you like it. I really, I really love ink blended backgrounds. And you just add a few simple things on top, like some die cuts, little fairies, and it looks great. So four and a quarter by five and a half to make sure I cut this the right way. 
and don't get distracted because I can't craft and talk. <laughs> it takes too much brain power. And then I'm just going to go ahead and score this at five and a half. Make an A2 size card. And I think I mentioned at the beginning, I already have links in the description to a few of these items that I'm using if you're interested in that. They are affiliate links, so if you click on them and buy anything, I get a small commission, but it adds no extra cost to any of you. All right, so I've got that one. Yes, a wood scene. That is what I was thinking, Ivy. We're on the same wavelength, I think. So I have some of these, um, some of these little trees here, and I was thinking about taking like one of these fairies kind of flying out of the woods and another one here and then kind of ink blending behind there just keep it really simple and then just add a little ink blending and i think that would be really cute so let's go ahead and tape this off again so i did like a really sort of a purpley sky for this one. So do you guys have any suggestions of what to do on this one? Should I do blue? Should I do like a orange and like red sunset kind of thing? You know what? I threw away my tape, didn't I? I should have kept it so I could do this, this next one. Oh well. I've got tons of painter tape, so I'm just gonna have to unsticky again. Green or turquoise? I think that would look really fun. Do like a green background. These can be like the woodland elves. Okay, I want to make sure that I get this straight. There we go. I feel like once I get the first side kind of taped down straight, the other ones aren't as bad to do. Oh, okay, so this one only wanted to tear off half of my tape, but we'll work with that. Do so you guys have any big plans for 2019? <laughs> Do you have anything exciting going on this year? Last year was a big year for us. We moved across the country. Um, so I'm hoping this year will be a little bit less, less exciting. Maybe kind of just get back to normal maybe but we'll see we don't have anything big planned for this year hopefully i can go home to wisconsin to see my family at some point i haven't been back there for a while so yeah now that i think about it the last two years have been kind of eventful um, my daughter was born in 2017 Last year, we moved across the country, so this year, as far as I can see, we don't have any huge changes coming up, hopefully. <laughs> All right, I've almost got this taped off, and then let's, let's see what kind of green background colors we can use. Maybe we should go from like a yellow to a green, to a blue. Wouldn't that look fantastic? Let me find some of those colors. So, put all these back in here. Um, let's see, here's my swatch chart. So maybe some zest, and then we can have it blend into, mm, that's a really cool green. Might be a little dark. Let's see, let's see. So we'll go yellow into, here's some cabbage. That's like a yellowish. Why don't I have a foamy pad thing for that? I know I have some somewhere. Um, that's kind of a yellowish green. And then into Envy. And then I'm picking out a lot of colors now. And then Oz is kind of, where's my Oz? It's kind of a greenish blue. And then we'll go into a darker, 
blue. How does that sound? Maybe cabana. Here's cabana. Let's see what that looks like. That's a lot of colors. So we'll see what that looks like. Okay. So let's start with zest kind of down here on the bottom. Let me see something here. Oh, that's kind of perfect, isn't it? So this is going to fit perfectly inside my masked off area. I love it when things just end up looking like I intended them to be that way, but I really didn't. It's just a happy accident. <laughs> okay. And then, oh, let me get another one of those. Let's see. I've always got extra foam blenders. I think I need to order some more though. Into cabbage. Cabbage is one of the first colors that I got from Brutus Monroe of Surface Ink. Cabbage, I got the fall colors first. So it was cabbage, jack-o'-lantern, aubergine, and what was the last one? I thought there was four. I can't remember what the last one was. But those were my first Surface Inks. So I remember I used cabbage a lot in the beginning because I just love the bright green. So let's go put some Envy. I love this green too because it's so bright. I think this one's a little bit um, of a newer color. Now it's looking a little, uh, you know, crazy right now, but... I'm just getting some color on here and then I'm going to go back and blend it out again. Okay. And then grab some Oz. Ooh, I love that. Oz is one of my favorite colors too. Look at how it blends in with that Envy. It just looks fantastic. I might just have to put a little bit extra of this on here. I love this color too. One of my favorites. So pretty. I'm going to um, kind of bring that up a little bit more. It's really adding some depth to that background. And then I'm going to do Cabana. Cabana, I haven't used a whole lot. It's one of my newer colors, but um, I used it on a project recently and I'm like, oh my goodness, I love this blue. It's like a darker blue, but it still kind of has like a hint of green, I think. So it goes perfectly with these colors that we're using today. I'm gonna bring some down on this side. Try to get this top to be a little bit darker. There we go. And now I'm just gonna go and blend it back down. Blend it out again. So I can get all those colors blending together. So let's get some more Oz. And then we can also splatter on some more of that tur or not turquoise, that some more of that pearl. But what do you guys think if I splattered on some, some gold liquid elements? Because gold might look kind of pretty against this background. Although my fairies are silver, so I don't know. Can you mix gold and silver? <laughs> or is that some kind of design no-no? I'm not sure. So our colors are starting to blend together. So ink blending, if you haven't tried it before, I know some people get frustrated. They feel like they can't um, get a nice blend, but really you just, it takes a little time. You have to keep blending those colors together. And also um, it helps if you give it a little bit of time to soak into the paper. Cause that's gonna help too. Sometimes it looks, looks better. You'll be surprised if you if you walk away and then come back and it's soaked in a little bit better. But I think one thing that um, 
a lot of people don't realize and I didn't realize when I first ink blend started to ink blend is it does take some time. <laughs> Oops, not zest. I'm going for cabbage. It takes some time to get it all blended in. You just keep going back. And if you have like a good smooth cardstock, like maybe a Bristol smooth, it's going to help um, that ink to smear around better. Um, but honestly, I basically use cheap Walmart paper. I said it, I use cheap Walmart paper and you can get a good blend on cheap paper too. It just takes a little bit, a little bit more time. So just keep working at it, but it's one of my favorite techniques. So let's get, um, let's get this zest here on the bottom. And I think that looks really cool. I love doing live videos with you guys because I probably would have picked like um, a, just like a blue background, but I love that you suggested the green because we have so many colors on here, but they all work so well together. Thanks, Ivy. I'm so glad you suggested the green because um, you guys helped me pick colors that I probably wouldn't gravitate to myself and then I always love how they turn out so thank you I'm gonna put a little bit more Oz up here I'm seeing sort of a light strip that I kind of want to blend in hey Lauren did you get your card photographed <laughs> were you here to see the um the finished product of our first card so here it is Super simple, but I love all the shine on there. So now we're going with like a blue-green background. Oh, you posted it. I'll have to go see. Can't wait to see what you did. Okay. So I think I'm done with the ink blending. I'm going to stop here before I overkill it. And I'm going to put my ink away. Sometimes I just feel like I need to put some stuff away before I move on to the next step. So that I can have more surface to work with. <laughs> okay. There's all my inks. I think I got all my foam blendy tools and I'll put those away. And I'm debating if I want to do the gold or the pearl. I think the gold would look really cool, but I want to put this, um, oh, where did my fairies go? Get back here. I want to put that over it. I want to make sure I don't get ink all over there since I've got my inky fingers. And then, so maybe I want to do a pearl. Or maybe I want to stick with the pearl because I don't know, but the gold would look so cool with that background. Maybe I'll go gold. We'll do some gold. I feel like I need gold fairies now, but I don't have any gold glitter drops. But I love, yeah, I think so too. The gold, and I think the gold would really look really nice with these colors. So, you guys see my fingers? <laughs> Full of ink. All right, make sure I get it all shaken up really well. I'm going to use my, um, I'm going to use my water brush to splatter it on again. Oh, so gold and silver can go together. Your wedding, oh, your wedding ring is both. Oh, pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna go pick some of them up. Can I color the fairies? That's a good idea. I have not tried that. Oh my goodness, I already love the gold uh, against this blue. Mm, so pretty. Gotta pick up some more of that gold. And it's going to shine so much more when it, we dry it. When that water gets evaporated. Um, maybe we should see if we can color the fairies. I don't even know. That would be cool. My only thing is, like, if I try to use the um, liquid elements on top of the fairies. Oh, she's getting crushed. Um, I'd have to wait for them to dry because I don't know if I can take my heat tool to them 
So I might want to just stick with. I might want to stick with the um, silver ones, but you know what? Maybe I'll try coloring like that one when it dries. An alcohol ink. Hmm. I wonder. I know you have to be careful with the alcohol ink and some different different mediums. Maybe I'll have to ask Christopher if, if he thinks these are safe with alcohol ink. Because I know you want to be careful with um, embossing powder in alcohol ink. Now, you can color with Brutus Monroe's embossing ink because that is not, it's oil-based um, and it's safe without the alcohol ink. I know that, but I'm not sure about these glitter drops. Oh, Belinda, that sounds so pretty. I don't know if, if I've seen a lot of mixed um, wedding rings, but that sounds really pretty. Okay. So I think that background is done. I'm going to go ahead and dry it. Can you guys see that shimmer already? <laughs> it looks like gold stars in the sky. I am loving it. So pretty! Oh my goodness, I love this background. Okay, let's peel off the tape really slowly. I think some of the liquid elements is a little bit wet yet, but I really don't want this paper to warp too much, so I'm gonna let some of it dry on its own. I just wanted to dry it a little bit. Okay. But it definitely gets um, more shimmery as it dries. There we go. Loving this color combination. So yeah, just peel your tape off back on itself really slowly so you don't rip your cardstock. Because I've done that before and I've been so bummed when I put a lot of effort into a card and then I go and rip it. If that happens, I would just probably trim it down and then just pop this front piece up on a card base. Um, but it's really cool if you can achieve the one layer look as well. Ta-da! There is our card. Can you guys see that shimmer? So cool. I wonder. And we don't have a whole lot of bleeding through. And this is this is that cheap Walmart paper, people. Um, so it's not all that thick. This one was actually a little bit thicker. This is a better quality paper, but this is the cheap paper. So, I mean, you can get some good results with that cheap paper too. So I would definitely re um, recommend buying a cheaper paper if you're just starting or if you just want to experiment with it um, instead of, um, you know, using up all your good quality paper. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. I think I'm going to leave it white just like I did on this card so they kind of are a matching set. I don't know what I'm going to do with this sentiment yet because I don't see much room to stamp it, but we'll figure something out. Yes, I just bought a pack of the Walmart paper Oops, because it is really good for practicing. It's really good for, you know, layering and stuff. Um, and you don't have to feel as bad as if you mess up because it's the cheap paper. <laughs> so I, keep, I try to keep my, my good paper um, available for more important um, projects or if I'm making a card that's really um sentimental or means a lot. I'll try to use that for my more expensive paper. Because I just hate wasting a good piece of paper. So let's get glue all over on this back of this. And this is actually... Um, okay, I'm back. You taking me off again. Sorry guys, that's my hand. I'm trying to get you back on my stand without anything crazy happening. Okay, I was just about to glue down 
my forest. I was just telling you, I have, this is half of a die that cuts out a whole forest. Oops, I want that to go over a little bit. That will fit on in on front of your A2 size cards. So I used half of it on, I think a Christmas card earlier. And I'm using this, I kept this other half. And now I can use it on this card. Oh, that's true, Belinda. <laughs> use the cheaper card stock for someone that you know is not going to keep it. That is true. I think I've mentioned before that I just don't ask anymore. I don't ask if they liked the card. I don't ask if they got the card or what they got with what they did with the card because I don't want to hear them say, oh, thanks. I threw it away. <laughs> but for me, I like the creative part of it. I like creating the cards. So after I'm done with them and send them off, you know, I guess it's whatever they want to do. Is it blurry? I'm sorry, Belinda. I don't know if there's anything else I can do. Maybe it just... Oh no! <laughs> Their dog chewed it up. <laughs> Yikes. That would be kind of sad, I think. Okay, so I was thinking about putting our little fairies right here. Kind of. That's cute, right? Let me angle her a little bit more. Alright. So... Now they don't want to let go. Let go. And then I'll go and glue those down. Belinda, it may have been um, blurry because it just kicked me off and I came back on. I don't know if you guys um, saw that, but it definitely, it keeps kicking me off. It's so annoying. Every time. So I'm going to go put my little fairy girl right here. I think it's kind of cute when her, um, she's kind of coming off the edge of this background. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know if there's anything I can do to make it not blurry. I know on my iPad it's, um, it's a little fuzzy, but on my phone it looks clear. And I think sometimes it's the live streaming. And sometimes if you watch the replay, it replays it um, clearer, I think, than the live stream. But I have to admit, I, I don't know how it all works. I know how to get my camera set up and I know how to hit go live and that's about it. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So I'm I'm liking those gold stars in the background. I don't think it clashes with the silver at all. Really cute. All right. Um I don't know what to do with a sentiment for this one though, guys. Should I just Okay, so it's clear for Lauren. So maybe if you close out and come back, might might work. Okay. Oh, you tried that already. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to suggest. Um, thank you, Ivy. I'm really loving these colors too. I'm loving how these cards are, are um, working out. So, do we want to use the same sentiment? Do we want to use a different one? I kind of like the you got this, my friend. It kind of seems like it goes with these two little girl fairies helping each other out here. Um, what do I have for sentiments? Um, I have a lot of sentiments, actually. Hey, let me have like... Okay, I have pretty much all of the Brutus Monroe stamps. Almost all of them. So there's a lot of sentiments everywhere. Here's the super sentimental stamp set. Maybe I could find one that fits in there. You're my favorite. You're amazing. Mm, hello, you're awesome. 
a little high. Which one would fit? Thankful for you? Hmm, that's cute. I'm just kind of figuring out which one might work. Maybe I should do a little thankful for you right over this fairy. What do you guys think? Just stamp it out with some black ink. That might, might work. Let me see. Because it kind of fits right there. It's going to go off on the side a little bit, but I don't know if that even matters. That might look nice. Thankful for you. Yeah, I don't like it underneath. I might just stamp this one out right there. What do you guys think? That might look nice. Okay, let me put this stamp away before I lose it. And then we'll go ahead and stamp this one out. Oh, that's my big bin of all my Brutus Monroe stamps. <laughs> that's funny because pretty much almost everything in my um, craft room is almost all Brutus Monroe. You're awesome. Do you think I should use the you're awesome? Let me see. Let me grab that. You are awesome. This one? That one might be nice. You could stamp that one right there. Kind of uh, put it to the side here a little bit. That one might be cute. Let's do that one. All right, we'll see what that one looks like. Okay, so I wanna try not to get my misty door on my drying little fairy up there that I ripped her foot off. Let's magnet this down. Make sure our stamp is in place. And I'm just gonna stamp it out, I think, just in black, I think. Unless I think, well, we, you know, we could emboss it in gold. No, I think I'm just going to do black because I think that'll be fine. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Okay. I'm loving, loving this green and blue background. I think it's my favorite. Love it. Okay. That looks really cute. I'm gonna do one more stamp. I want it to be nice and crisp and black. All right. Oh, I love it. So pretty. Might have to glue that little piece down. I have some adhesive on my misty paper, so that's why it's sticking. But there is the card. So really fun. You can make these little fairies with your glitter drops and then make some little cute note cards. I love how they worked, how they turned out. So I think that's all I've got um, for my live stream today. I think I want to go ahead and get these photographed before um, my sunlight goes away because I only have, um, I think, a few hours <laughs> of sunlight in my window that I take photographs on. And I have to also try to get it done before my kids wake up. So... I am going to probably say goodbye to you guys and then hopefully I can do a few more lives before creativation. I'll definitely try to get as much new stuff as I can. Um, try to get some, um, some video of whatever new things Christopher is going to be releasing. Um, he's over with ThermoWeb, so I think he's got some really fun stuff coming from that. <laughs> we'll see. So yeah, it might work with the glitter glaze. I've never tried letting that dry with a stencil. So that might be something I want to experiment with too, because I'm not sure if that dries like dimensional or if it stays together. I'll have to try that because that's interesting. So we'll see. I know the glitter drops and the glitter glaze, they're both a little bit different. Um, and now that I'm looking at this, Maybe it's, okay, maybe it's not. It looked like there was some gold glitter in there, but I think it's just kind of picking up different colors. Anyway, so I think I need to kind of get going 
and get these photographed and then um i'll see you guys again next time i'm live i wish i could kind of make a set schedule but um my life changes from day to day <laughs> with two little kids anyway so thank you for hanging out with me i'm really glad um you could all pop in and give me suggestions for colors because i love how these backgrounds turned out so i'll catch you guys later um i hope you have a great day and i'll see ya bye